Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you um, an example of how to use um, one of the new identities that we have in Section 6.6. .6. If you remember from the last tutorial, the last identity that we learned was that the tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine. And when we have something like that called an identity, it simply means that it's true all the time. So this is another one that we have, and it's in your book on page 271. And this is actually a very, very helpful identity to use. We're not going to just see it through this first semester. We're going to see it the entire year, and it's going to be really helpful for us. So I want to go through an example with you. This is example number four in your textbook, but I'm going to walk you through little by little so you can see how we can use this. Okay, so here's the problem. It says, suppose that the cosine of theta is equal to 2 thirds, and 3 pi over 2 is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 2 pi. Find cosine theta and tangent theta. And I just realized that I wrote cosine instead of sine, so let me fix that real quick. Okay, there's the correction in red. Um, sorry about that. Now, the part that you need to start um, understanding is this inequality right here. This is telling you what degree measure that you want your answer to be within. And if you know your radians and degree measures, you should know that 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees, and 2 pi is 306 degrees. So when we're finished, we just want to make sure that our answer lies somewhere in between the two. Okay, so we need to get this started, and I'm going to use our new identity to help us. Because I know up here that I have a value for cosine, and 1 is a constant, and so all I'm looking for is sine. And that's what I'm looking for. You want to keep those things in your mind while you're picking, which I didn't need to help you with. So let's go ahead and get this started. I'm first just going to copy down the identity as it is, which is the cosine squared of theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And I'm going to rewrite it with what I know. Now, up here it says that the cosine of theta is equal to 2 thirds. And in my identity it says that cosine is being squared. And this is actually how you write um, when a trig function is being squared. It goes before the theta. Okay? So, I'm going to replace cosine with 2 thirds. And I'm going to square it. And then I'm just going to copy the rest of this down because I don't know anything else. So sine squared theta equals 1. All right. So far, so good. So let's go ahead and square 2 thirds. And when you square a fraction, all you need to do is square the numerator and then square the denominator. So 2 squared is 4. And 3 squared is 9. And I'm just going to copy the rest of that down again. So in order to solve this equation, I'm actually going to go ahead and subtract 4 ninths from both sides of my equation. And when I do that, the 4 ninths cancel, and I have sine squared theta on the left-hand side, and 1 minus 4 ninths is the same thing as me doing 9 ninths because that's what 1 is the same thing as. So that gives me 5 ninths. Now, in order to uh, solve for this theta, we want to get sine theta so that it's just sine theta, not sine squared theta. So all you have to do to, for this is the opposite of squaring something, which is square rooting something. So I'm going to write sine theta equals the square root of 5 Nights. And one thing that you want to make sure that you do is write your plus or minus sign out in front. Because as long as this is positive or negative, it, when I square it, it will still work. Now, when I have this, if either part of that fraction, the 5 or the 9, happens to be a perfect square, take the square root of it. So this would look like plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3, okay, because the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so 
This is the first part of my answer. Because it was telling, it was asking me what find sine of theta. So sine theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. So we need to keep that information, and now we want to find tangent. Okay, so up here on the right-hand side, I made a note to myself of what sine theta was equal to, because I'm going to have to use that to get to, to tangent. Now, we can't use our new identity to find tangent because nothing in that equation tells me anything about tangent. But there is one thing that I did learn from this section, and that was that tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. And that is what we are going to use to help us because I know what sine theta is and I know what cosine theta is. So. I'm going to just rewrite the tangent theta part again, and let's go ahead and substitute what we know. So the sine theta um, is going to be plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. So which one are we going to use? Well, let's remember that this range that we originally thought about, it has to be between 270 degrees and 360. If I look at my unit circle, Okay, that means that I'm in my fourth quadrant. And, but from my knowledge right now, I know that any y value there should be negative. So that's what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to write negative square root of 5 over 3. And then cosine theta is 2 thirds. Okay, now what's nice here is I taught you that shortcut when you have complex fraction. If the denominators of both parts of the complex fraction are the same, they cancel out. So that's actually pretty nice. So what that tells me now is all I have is negative square roots of 5 over 2. And that is okay to have because the tangent values in the fourth quadrant are also negative. There's nothing to rationalize here because it's already finished for me. So this is my answer. So I have the first part of my answer up here on the right, the sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. However, we are just going to look at the negative sign. So I'm going to change that. And then the second part of my answer is that the tangent of theta is equal to negative square roots of 5 over 2. And that's my answer. So you're going to be doing problems like this, and you're going to have to know which identity to use and when. So start practicing.